What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Infinity 60% keyboard from MassDrop. Now as a DIY keyboard kit, that means you yourself will be building this from the ground up with all the parts they provide for you obviously. And it's actually very simple and easy to do. This is only my second time building a keyboard. I had no problems with it whatsoever. It was actually pretty fun and I am just a huge fan of this compact 60% layout that they have on these keyboards. I love the way it looks. I love how it fits in with my desk setup overall. So if you're interested in picking this keyboard up, you wanna learn on how to build it, or just the whole process that goes into building a keyboard, I will show you and help you out, as well as shipping in my two cents on the end on what I think about this keyboard, giving you a rundown of my thoughts and experiences with it. Again, in case you wanna pick it up, I got you covered. So let's start off with the build. So before the assembly, let's take a look at all the pieces. And as I mentioned, Mass Drop gives you everything you will need to get up and running. Everything is packaged and bagged individually so you know exactly what you have to get started. First is our case. I went with the white case for a whole white body. And you have one of those units here, which will come in its own box. You then will have your plate or your main base for the keyboard. This is where your keys and the PCB will be attached to. A bag of your stabilizers for your space bar and other keys that require extra support. Your key set, I have the white and powder blue key set. And you have your PCB. This is where obviously all the key switches will be attached to once you solder them onto there. Uh, came bubble wrapped and very nicely protected, so that was good. We have the mini USB cord, obviously to give it power to your PC. And your switches, I went with Cherry Clears because they're kind of my uh, personal favorites. But you can pick upon different ones at checkout, so you're not limited whatsoever. And a bag of screws for holding down the PCB to the case. Next, we'll be applying all these switches to the base plate. This is very easy because they all go in the same exact way uh, with the Cherry logo on top of the stem facing you. And the way you put them in is simply by just pressing them through the board from the top down. You don't do it from the bottom of the board up towards you. Top down like I am doing here. And you will know that it is securely in place because once you get it in about halfway, it will click. And that's how you'll know that it is successfully inside the board because it won't move around. And they want to make sure you're very careful while doing this because the prongs in the back are exposed. So you don't want to chance, you know, bending or breaking them since they are um, on the back and they'll be touching them. So you're going to do this for all 60 of these switches into the plate. And then once you do so, you'll be applying the PCB to the bottom of the plate uh, with all the prongs properly fitting through the respective little holes there. Because this is how you're going to uh, get it to solder onto the board. As you can see, the prongs are fitting through the side there, and it'll kind of all snap into place once all 60 keys um, are fit through properly. Next is going to be the process of soldering, and this could be very dangerous, so make sure to be very careful here if you're a first timer, even if you're experienced. And I typically like to keep my soldering iron at around 300 degrees Celsius while doing this to hit that fine melting point. And the way you're going to do this, again, I'm not going to give you a tutorial here, is simply by applying the solder to the tip of the iron. It will then get extremely hot, melt the solder onto the plate, and you will then begin to fill all the little holes where the prongs are sticking through. What this is going to do is then connect the metal pieces in so it can act as like a conductor for the electrical current, which will essentially make them connected and make the key switches now work and be a part of the keyboard. This is only my second time ever doing this, so I'm still relatively inexperienced, but it catches on pretty quick once you start doing it. A technique I like to do is heat the prongs up before I apply the solder to it, so that way the solder um, will apply to it a lot easier since it's already hot. And the trick is not to do too much while not doing too little at the same time. You want to kind of fill that little pool there where the prong is sticking through with enough solder. So that way the key switch is fully attached to the board. Um, don't touch it. You want it to fully uh, I guess settle for around a few minutes afterwards. And take your time doing this. You don't want to rush or potentially mess anything up. Uh, you could probably knock this out in around 30 minutes or less so since there's only 60 keys total you'll we'll be doing this for. It's pretty simple and actually I find it kind of fun. Once you think you're done, go back and kind of check over each one to make sure that every one is accounted for because you don't want to find that you skipped one later on and that would really be annoying. So make sure that every prong is soldered properly and um, I actually skipped one my first time so just double check and it never hurts to be too sure. Next is arguably the most annoying part, that's applying the stabilizers. You have to do this for the spacebar, the shift key, and the enter key. 
And you get these little plastic pieces that slide pretty easily into these little cutout slots that they fit right into. You just kind of bend them in, they snap into place. Then you have these little black stem pieces that go inside the space bar, which will help them be stabilized once they are on the space bar area. As you can see here, they have these little slots in the middle. That's what you'll be putting the uh, little wire through. As you can see here, I have these slots um, with the little uh, stabilizer pieces on the, the, uh, the inside slot there with the metal space bar uh, kind of attached to the bottom side of it. As you can see, it snaps into place on the bottom of the stabilizer there. And what you're going to do with that little cutout on the bottom of the space bar is fit them through that piece that is sticking up. And they will then go into the sides of the stabilizer and you'll again fit them on the top of the key stem. You do the same thing for the shift and the, uh, the enter key as well. And I know it sounds confusing, but it's kind of like a puzzle. Once you see it, it'll make sense. They all fit together and it'll help stabilize the keys so they're not wobbly since they're kind of longer and they'll be much more secure on the board itself. And then it's all easy from here on out because all you're left to do is align these six holes inside the case with the holes on your frame. Use these six screws to tighten the board to the base itself and you will be good to go. That will then secure your entire keyboard together so it's not loose or anything on the inside. And that is going to be pretty much the last step in assembling your keyboard, other than applying all the keycaps to it in whatever layout you choose. Again, you can flash it and pick different layouts. And that is going to be the next step, is just applying all your keycaps, which if you know your layout will take no time at all, and is the last satisfying step to completing your Infinity 60 keyboard here. So as I mentioned earlier, this keyboard was extremely easy to build. And with it being only my second keyboard that I personally built, I think it's going to appeal to a much larger audience of people since it is very consumer friendly in the fact that it has a 60% uh, compact layout. That means you'll be dealing with much less components and much less complex things that you would have to do in other keyboards. If you're a fan of the channel and if you've been around for a while, you'll know that I built the Ergodox Infinity keyboard which admittedly is geared towards a much smaller audience. Uh, so this is going to be a lot more uh, appealing to the normal person who wants a keyboard. I love the way it looks. And that Ergodox Infinity keyboard was a lot more expensive than this. So that is a huge plus as well. So for anybody like a beginner, an amateur, or as a keyboard enthusiast who wants to learn how to build keyboards, this is a fantastic option for your first keyboard since it is so simple. Now getting into my overall experience with it, other than the fact of it being so simple to build, it is an extremely solid keyboard and I'm a huge fan of that. Upon checkout on Mashdrop, you can go and customize it at the end, um, getting certain things like different keycap sets. I went with the white and like powder blue option. Uh, you can get different switches inside. I went with the cherry clears, as well as picking a different base for it. So you can completely customize it to how you like uh, but for the option that I have here, I think it looks really nice. It feels really solid when I'm typing or when I'm gaming. I'm just, like I said, a huge fan of how this looks. It doesn't feel cheap to me. It does have some weight to it, which is nice. And the included kind of rubber feet on the bottom is going to help it so it doesn't slide around or scratch up your desktop surface. Always a good thing. The simplicity of the 60% compact keyboards, I think is really unparalleled in the keyboard market. Just going off uh, strictly of its appearance, uh, when it's on your desktop, I think it just makes it look a lot nicer. If it's sitting on your desk, it's really gonna catch people's eyes. And having to deal with less keys you're not gonna use, um, I think is really nice, because you can just use you know, like certain functions and shift keys to address those layouts, which again, can also be flashed if you choose to have a different configuration or layout of this keyboard after you build it but um, I can't say any more than I already have I'm just a huge fan of the layout of this keyboard I love compact keyboards and going along with its appearance I think it's really nice touch how you could very subtly see that brushed aluminum silver base underneath the keys uh, since the keycaps are kind of large they don't really you know expose too much of the base underneath but that silver glow to it when it hits the light just right I think it looks really nice, definitely is going to accent the color of your keyboard, depending on what options you get, obviously. But with my color layout, I think it looks really nice. If I had to pick a con or something I don't like about it, it would pretty much be only one thing. Uh, the micro USB cable that comes with it is extremely short and it's rubberized. I want to say it's only maybe three feet long, 
which unless your PC is right next to, you know, where you're working at your desktop, you're gonna need a longer cable. And it was just a struggle for me to even plug this in behind me on my desk to my PC right there. And it's extremely close. So if you're gonna pick this up, I would highly uh, recommend that you invest in a longer micro USB cord, probably a braided one since those are always nicer. They don't snag as easily. And it'll just help uh, match the keyboard a lot nicer because you can get them in a bunch of different colors. So that's probably the only downfall to this. And uh, it's considering that's the only downside, I think that tells you a lot about this overall. Very solid construction, looks really nice. Gives you uh, the, op the option to upgrade in the future as well if you wanna swap out different switches, if you know how to unsolder and stuff like that. Switch out the base of the keyboard, switch out the keycaps. Love this thing to death and I would highly recommend it. But also don't forget, it does not come with a soldering kit. So unless you have one already, you will need to pick one of those up I will put my kit in the description down below that I got from Amazon. Very, very cheap. It got the job done with no problems at all. So keep that in mind. You'll need a soldering iron if you don't have one already. That's pretty much going to wrap it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed my little review and build guide for the Affinity 60% DIY keyboard from Mashdrop. Definitely pick it up if you are in the market for a new keyboard or you just want to build a keyboard for the first time. It'll be in the description down below as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up to show your support. If you have any questions, you can comment down below or feel free to hit me up on Twitter at randomfrankp. You can feel free to give me a follow on there. And lastly, guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I got a ton of keyboard and tech reviews coming out in the near future that you're not going to want to miss out on. Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.